From Star Wars to Marvel to Bud Light, and even to the air traffic industry, where planes have just started falling apart, the diversity, equity, and inclusion policies under the larger ESG scheme have wrought havoc wherever they have been introduced, and video gaming is no exception. Helping developers destroy what otherwise might have been good and commercially successful games in the name of DEI is consulting companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and others that have recently been exposed. But that begs the question though, why would any developer choose to hire the services of these companies in the first place? Is it all one big virtue signal, or is someone forcing them? Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. Let's find out. Seemingly not learning from the very expensive mistakes others already have made, Xbox, who are already struggling in the gaming scene, just announced their own extensive foray into the realm of DEI. But as we shall see, it goes much, much deeper than that. Because this has everything to do with why there is a market for the likes of Sweet Baby Inc. First up, if you are new to this, Sweet Baby Inc. is one of the many consulting companies that, according to themselves, offer game developers the valuable service of going through their in-development games, give them a sensitivity read, and assist in making the final product more diverse and inclusive in authentic ways that make gamers feel safe, seen, and represented, for a more joyous gaming experience for all. However, in the practical experience of many gamers, this amounts to sidelining white characters, emasculating male characters, uglifying female characters, and commifying storylines, all of which serve to ruin the games. There are many consultancy companies that do these services, though, and gamers are now aware of them and actively boycotting games that these companies have worked on, or more accurately, destroyed. Against this backdrop of an organic grassroots movement of gamers taking a stand then, it seems weird for Xbox to go public with this. That Park Place put into the headline what many feel, Xbox Head of Gaming for Everyone and Sustainability, Katie Jo Wright, confirms company is committing financial self-immolation. If you don't intentionally include, you will unintentionally exclude. The story reads, Xbox Head of Gaming for Everyone and Sustainability, Katie Jo Wright, revealed the company will be copying what Marvel Studios has been doing to the Marvel Cinematic Universe over the past half decade in an interview with Games Industry to promote the company's Gaming for Everyone product inclusion framework that was internally launched in 2019 and is now being made public. The framework was created by Wright's Gaming for Everyone team that was created in 2015. Specifically, Wright detailed the purpose of the entire framework. If you don't intentionally include, you will unintentionally exclude. That is how we are as human beings. There is no shame in that. If you want to include, you have to be intentional about that. Before we move on, let's briefly address that claim, as it is completely and utterly wrong. The reality is that when you take an extra measure to include a small minority that for whatever reason weren't interested in your current commercial offering, then the change you have to make to your commercial offering in order to do that could very well end up making it unappealing to a great number of your current and actual customers. You lose them, and there is no guarantee that the minority you wanted to include will buy your products anyway. And even if they do, their numbers won't be anywhere near what is needed to offset the number of customers you lost to get them. That is what all experience shows to be true, because multiple franchises and properties, and if we move outside the realm of entertainment, whole product classes, have tried to expand their audience by being inclusive in these past few years. And guess what? The failure rate is 100%. None have succeeded. 
From Marvel, to Star Wars, to Bud Light, to most recently, Planet Fitness. History shows that whenever you go out of your way to be inclusive, you exclude your existing customers. That is the big flaw in the ESG and DEI framework. This assumption that your current customers are sheep that will stay put no matter how much you change your product range and offering. And that is just not the case. The reality is that everything, and I mean everything you do to include someone, excludes someone else. Also, even if Wright does not use the term DEI, because just like ESG, that term has been rendered toxic as more people come to realize what it actually and legitimately means. That is, nonetheless, exactly what this is. A DEI framework that was, and this is the important bit here, first created in 2015, and then it has been used internally in Xbox, and therefore by Xbox developers, since 2019. So, what we are about to see has been Xbox policy since 2019, and their developers have been expected to adhere to it since then. Everybody got that? Good! We, the public, only get to see this now, no doubt after a minor rewrite to remove the abbreviations DEI and ESG, and replace some other key terms with appropriate synonyms. But this is nonetheless what Xbox developers have had to adhere to for five years already. So, now that it has been made public for all to see, let's have a look at it. Again, because this can't be stressed enough. The official Xbox pages we're about to explore now are available for us outsiders to see, but they were made for Xbox developers. If you want to see your game released on the Xbox, this is what you're expected to adhere to. The landing page reads, Welcome to Gaming for Everyone's Product Inclusion Resource Hub. At Xbox, our mission is to bring the joy and the community of gaming to the billions of gamers on the planet. To do that, we're on a journey to make product inclusion an intentional part of Team Xbox. In 2019, we realized the need to create... Actually, what it should say is Klaus Schwab's bosses told him, and he told Larry Fink. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. And Larry Fink told Bill Gates, and Bill Gates told us, and now we're telling you, that you need a common language and understanding around this work. So we invented the Product Inclusion Framework to focus on four key areas, which we call the Inclusive Growth Doorways. If you want to learn how you can join us on this journey, i.e. how to get your games published on the Xbox, watch our video to learn more and explore the resources below. Alright, let's see a snippet of this video. At Xbox, our mission is to deliver the joy and community of gaming to everyone on the planet. From gamers young and old, to developers big and small, to parents and guardians, and all the three billion gamers we have yet to reach. Okay, there then is what they hope to achieve here. According to this video, there are 3 billion potential gamers left on the table. Let's see how they're gonna reach them. Since the creation of Gaming for Everyone in 2015, we've been on a journey to help our teams have the tools, knowledge, and practices to make more inclusive products to meet the needs of those 3 billion gamers. So how do we get from where we are today to be the industry we want to be tomorrow? We do this through product inclusion. Nice product inclusion. That sounds like it's going to make everyone flock to Xbox. Let's hear that mantra one more time. And if we don't intentionally include, we unintentionally exclude. Now, if I play any more of that video, they'll probably claim it. But the rest of what they go through is on the website anyway, so let's just continue there. Scrolling down just a little bit, we see how product inclusion is to be achieved, namely through the four inclusive growth doorways. The first of the four inclusive growth doorways is approachability, which makes you feel welcome. Then there's representation, which makes you feel that you belong. 
unless you're an existing gamer of course. None of this is for you, on the contrary. Most of what is here could very well drive you away. But screw you, Xbox has 3 billion other potential customers to replace you with. And that brings us to the third door, globalization, which is supposed to make those new gamers feel at home. And finally, accessibility, which is to make sure that they can actually play the games, no matter their level of disability. Scrolling down a bit further, these four inclusive growth doorways have been further derived into 10 product inclusion actions. And if you are a gamer, these matter to you, because these are what Xbox developers have to abide by. To see what each of these mean, let's scroll back up to the four inclusive doorways. As for maximum inclusion, each one of them is clickable. The first one, approachability, in principle just means that it should be easy to find and get into games, certainly much easier than getting out of them. But that also shouldn't be so difficult that trying to find an exit point should give you a negative experience. Sounds reasonable, until you get to the approachability product inclusion actions, which are the first of those 10 product inclusion actions Xbox developers have to abide by, where first and foremost, you have to design for customer safety and trust. Game developers are instructed to look for ways to ensure player interactions and communications are safe, especially as it relates to identity. Now, nothing here is inherently negative, and there's nothing here that automatically is going to ruin games. But when developers are instructed to design for safety, especially pertaining to identity, then most normal people, and I include game developers who just want to make the best games possible in that, don't know what the hell that even means, much less how to do it. And this, then, is where the need for consultant companies like Sweet Baby Inc. and others like them is artificially manufactured and created. These consultancy companies all popped up right around the time these initiatives were launched, and they will tear any game that otherwise might have been successful apart, and rebuild it as something that is safe and inclusive. You know, like the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League game. Sweet Baby Inc. made it so safe, especially for identity, that Warner Corporate singled out how badly it tanked in their earnings call. But of course, it takes more than being safe to create a flop that big. Let's breeze on through to the next inclusive doorway, namely that of representation. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's just go through some highlights. Xbox wants customers to feel that they belong, which means create product experiences with respectful expressions. That, in turn, means that Xbox wants their developers to partner with and support diverse content creators, so that the content tells stories that resonates with diverse players. First and foremost, this is Xbox now dictating to their developers that they need to make identity-based hires. Also, note the tacit assumption that the built-in audience of, I guess, mostly non-diverse players will keep supporting whatever is released. So the priority here is that these diverse players that developers have to bend over backwards to attract will feel seen. It is simply taken for granted that the other lemmings that make up their customer base will still fork over their cash. To help achieve this though, there are a bunch of sub-menus. There's one for helping customers feel seen, where a bunch of statements are made and dubious data is presented, all of which boils down to that developers need to incorporate stories and themes from marginalized communities or emerging markets in a relatable way. Now, who's gonna help developers who just want to make great games do all of this? This obviously isn't explicitly stated, but again, this is where consultant companies like Sweet Baby Inc. come into the picture. Remember, one of their selling points is while they don't necessarily know how to make popular games, they do have a very diverse and overtly sensitive staff that will weigh in on everything and change up any game that comes their way until they all feel safe and seen by it. And that ties right into the next subheading here, co-create with the community, where the subheading pretty much says it all. 
involve the identities of people who you seek to represent in your development and creation process from beginning to end in your staff, feedback channels, research and community engagement. To ensure compliance here, they even have questions for developers to consider, such as what steps have you taken to ensure characters are represented respectfully and are relatable? Have you validated assumptions you've made about your audience to check for blind spots or unintended stereotypes? What process have you used to validate how different groups of people or cultures are represented in your experience? Beyond these diversity matters, which ensures that pretty much all developers need to hire activist staff and the services of the likes of Sweet Baby Inc., they even have leading questions to ensure that all female characters will be shapeless, covered up girl bosses, and that all male characters be cucked emotional wusses. Just listen to this. Are you reinforcing any negative gender stereotypes? And I leave to your imagination what they may mean by that. Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? Because we mustn't offend the beached whales. When the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability? And then they round it out with the final cherry on top. Do you have a process to review key decisions with a lens of helping customers feel seen? In short, if you want your games on the Xbox, it's not enough to merely change up your games a little bit. You have to transform your entire company. helping their developers out even more. Xbox even details steps on how to achieve all of this inclusivity. For example, even with creatives with the same lived experience, build in time to validate their output with others of the same lived experience through advisory councils, consultants, and or user research. That means it's not enough that you have black people on staff already. You really need to hire a consulting company like Sweet Baby Inc. or someone else just like them. Because they continue, no person or small team can represent large groups of people. This, then, is why companies like Sweet Baby Inc. exist. They are not an optional extra, because of draconian rules like these, in this case direct from Xbox themselves, developers are in a sense forced to use the services of these consulting companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. 54% uh, of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. It's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. And that's not just not recruiting, it is development, as Ken said. How do you force change, though? I mean, Larry, BlackRock has, has really been in the forefront of the ESG movement within, within corporate governance and a real leader and yet change is so slow. So what is, uh, and, and Ken as well, what, what, how do you force change when it is so incremental and so gradual? Um, how do you do something more radical? Have you thought about that? Has the board of American Express thought about more radical things we could do to enhance diversity and inclusion? Because it has to be imbued in the culture of a firm. It has to be talked about, it has to be shown. Behaviors across the entire firm in every region have to be similar. And every citizen of the firm has to understand what is acceptable behaviors and what are unacceptable behaviors. There is much more to go through, of course. We haven't even looked at the final two inclusive doorways, namely globalization and accessibility, which is mostly about localization, marketing, and having a workable product. None of which is going to help, of course, since the games were wokeified and thus ruined already in the approachability and representation stages. And this, then, is the regime that Xbox developers have been working under since 2019. 
This is why there is a market demand for companies like Sweet Baby Inc. It is artificially created by these draconian requirements that Xbox forces upon their developers. And I assure you, Xbox are not the only ones doing this. Though in ultimately being controlled by Bill Gates, it is not a stretch to imagine that Xbox may be among the most ESG compliant, to put it that way. To summarize then, it's not that the game developers have decided to tank their own games by hiding the likes of Sweet Baby Inc. just for fun. They have, in a sense, been forced to do this. Of course, there are a large number of people working for the game developers that are true believers in the cause. But as we just saw, the developers were pretty much forced into hiring these people as well. In my opinion, this is why the establishment gaming press was so quick to run cover for Sweet Baby Inc. Pushing the narrative that they're just consultants and that their recommendations are just that. Recommendations that don't have to be followed. So stop looking at this company right now. Because otherwise, you might discover that they are but the tip of a much bigger, much further reaching, and much more nefarious iceberg. So, are you planning on getting any Xbox games anytime soon? Not that they need you, of course. According to their ideology, they should have 3 billion new and more diverse customers who feel safe and seen pick up an Xbox any day now. So, they'll probably manage just fine without your custom. Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments.